you learn to shoot, that doesn't mean you are going to kill somebody. You paying him to look after you. Whatever way you go, he's going. You have to listen to the, him. They all join together, jump in a car, off you go. Well, we can be better, so let's work uh, towards that way. <laughs>
you can generally tell from somebody's humble uh, outwardness that, that there's a lot a lot going on inside and uh, in here let's let 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 let's say that's the the vibe I'm picking up George yeah you are right um, I mean our uh, motto on this academy is our students safety it's kind of our responsibility because if we teach them well and we have a lot of proofs coming uh, back from uh, some students that been using the knowledge not necessarily the fighting skills because when we talk about self-defense it's more about awareness it's more about uh, uh, running away body language understand the situation and only if you have to defend yourself, that's when the fighting skills are coming. I'll say maybe 5%, but at any cost, just avoid the physical contact because people get injured. You might know what, how he's starting. We don't know how that ends. So, Can you tell that to my son, please? Uh, so, Chris, son, make sure that you don't engage. How old is your son? He's six, and his favorite oh. pastor. His favorite pastime is, um, can we say, abusing his daddy? <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's like a game. Uh, actually, you know, I mean, when I was uh, your son age, my father used to teach me how to defend myself, like uh, how to fight. He was a wrestler, a uh, few times a uh, Romanian champion. So once I think I was well, five, I came home with a split lip and my father asked me, what's that? Well, somebody punched me on the face. So you want to cry? No. So don't come and cry. You have to learn how to defend yourself. So he started to teach me how to punch, how to throw, how to this. And then that's how I started to kind of look after myself. It was nothing like you're running under the mother's skirt. Oh, somebody beat me up. I just I sorted it out. Yeah. So yes. fighting is that's how you learn. Look, animals, they fight uh, when they are Pubs or they, it's a play. So that's how you get, get better. So your son is doing a good job and I'm sure you will teach him very well. Yes, he, we, we put him into um, Taekwondo. Okay. He's been doing that about one year now and gradually getting better. But the instructor, uh, the instructor is a, a former commando as well. And he just looked at my son and went, your daddy knows how to fight. <laughs> right? it, it, it's, a, it's not really strictly true, but I know the basics, obviously, from, from the military. And, and just having an interest, I, I did judo when I was about 14, 15. did judo for one year and wow, just one year, which is so small, meant it, the, the skills I learned were, well. I mean, talking about the time, yeah. talking about the time, if you pay attention in what you, what you learning, I mean, if you are in 100% and you're there to, uh, I mean, if you have a, a good drive or a very, very high motivation, you can learn in one year that other people cannot learn in entire life. That's very simple like that. I saw so many, so many cases. And I mean, you, you also saw this on, uh, on army. Some people are very focused, very dedicated, and they go far. Other people who are, mm, it's okay like that. No, you have to all the time pushing yourself, like being thirsty or hungry to learn more and more and more. Yes, it was just amazing that um, they used to teach you the moves. I can't remember the names, but it's moves named things like U Uchimata and, and this kind of thing. And whenever anyone tried to bully me at school, I used to let it go once and then I'd let it go twice and then maybe the third time, just bang. And before the person even realized what happened, you can just put them on their ass, you know, and and then, of course, they 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 don't try and bully you again. And um, that, that that was the main. I don't know if it's one of the main reasons, but it was certainly a reason I wanted my son to start in the martial arts when he's young, because I think 
if if you become that person that gets bullied at school for whatever reason, it it can really affect you as an adult. It can really yes. affect, affect your confidence. And I just wanted my son to know that, um, you know, just enough, not not to be angry or aggressive, but to be able to uh, look after himself. Um, it's also good for uh, for them at this age because they develop uh, uh, motor skills, awareness, and um, kind of skill eight uh, years that's more or less what they develop and discipline uh you increase the the focus span because at this age they might be focused for two three minutes but uh, now i'm talking about depends on the the class structure you uh put them to for example do a, a kick and you'll see two three minutes they go a little bit kind of uh, out of the span make them to do something else. So you switch focus from one, one particular task to a different task, but actually without them knowing, you increase their, their focus. So you give them something that they are interested in. So that's kind of how we, we run our uh, kids classes. And now we can do on uh, our little uh, ones, even 10 minutes, 15 minutes, sometimes like a uh, combinations and flows. So they still focus. Uh, because what you do, you just want to, to increase that, which is, is good also uh, when they go to school, because they can stay more focused uh, on, on the lesson. Yes. So it's, not, it's not affecting just their, uh, like a, a sport uh, uh, life um, side. It's also the social life side. Yes, L life skills. Yes. George, I'm fascinated to hear... Well, lots of things, really. I'd like to know more about Ru Romania. I, okay. I, I had friends used to go backpacking there every summer. They loved it. They would meet incredible, incredibly interesting people that own ca castles up in the mountains and stuff. Um, and they'd get looked after and it was quite incredible. But um, I also want to ask you about your, your military experience because we don't have national service here as as i'm sure you know lots yes of people, lots of people think we should and of course i agree yeah and of course there's always you know different arguments for example one of the best one of the funniest things i heard was a um a guy called dave radband who was in the parachute regiment he's a friend of mine and, and Dave said, uh, the problem with military service is half the people, you, you don't want them to come and fight with you <laughs> <laughs> if they've been for, forced to join up to join. But Romania, um, I learned fairly recently, it's one of the few, is it five countries in the world that speaks a Latin language? Yes. Uh, now, I mean, it's Romania, it's Italy. Uh, English language has some uh, trace yeah. of Latin, uh, French, uh, Portuguese, uh, Spanish. Spain, and obviously, yeah. that's when, when you talk about the, the Spanish language, which is it's broadening out uh, to uh, South America, uh, perhaps a little bit of uh, Cuban. So, because I used to live in Portugal and work there, so I speak also Portuguese. I mean, I can still understand a lot. I stopped speaking since 2006. But uh, uh, it's very interesting how when you speak, for example, Portuguese, you understand a lot of Spanish. It's very, very similar. So, yeah, it's a Latin uh, language. And when you think of the name Romania, Roman Romania, then you understand the connection to to Italy and and uh, yeah, it's it's a lot a lot of stories about uh, our uh, like I would say ancestors we call uh, Dacians. Uh, they've been blood related with the uh, Romans. I'm talking about uh, um, uh, Julius Caesar and that uh, that times. Uh, uh, you know how is the history. History is the way how somebody will uh, 
write it down. So somebody will have one, one story, somebody will have a different story. And it depends on who is writing and what's serving for. So, but yes, it's a Latin language. Mm. I and actually, we used to learn uh, when I was, uh, I mean, my time, we used to learn Latin uh, in the school uh, as a part of the, I would say, uh, subjects. When I was uh, 13, 14, we used to learn Latin. It's a very, very, very difficult language. It's more difficult than Italian or Romanian. Have so many, so many things. It, it's hard language. Yes, lots of verbs and prepositions uh, and, and yes. I, we grammatical, did, it's, it's just nightmare. <laughs> yeah, we learn Latin at school. I don't know why, because you one year is not long enough to learn any, any mm. language, especially if you're not living in, 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 the, in, in the place, I mean. Um, most, most of the time you learn Latin because it's related with religion, with church. They read all that uh, books in Latin. Uh, so I think that's the, the reason. Mm. And when it, 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 in the UK, or maybe it's just myself, but when I think of Romania, we obviously think of the or orphanages. Um, it, what, why is there, why is this phen phenomenon? Well, when you think about Romanians, some people think about, also about the gypsies. So it's uh, easy to associate somebody with something bad. And I mean, like every country has their own, I would say, bad areas, their own problems. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, it's, uh, as I mentioned, it's easy to see the, um, the bad things in different countries than see what's happened in our own country. Mm -hmm. uh, it's no, no one to be blamed. It's, I think, how the society been molded in and what uh, the stream media is presenting the things. That makes sense? Yes, and I should say sorry, George. I didn't... No! To, to no, 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 it, 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 no, no, Chris, it's fine. I know it's, mm. it is what it is. So um, I, I it's a good wondered, question. <laughs> yeah, I just wondered if it was some cultural thing. Like I've lived in China and Hong Kong and over there, um, infanticide, I think they call it killing children. That was quite normal and, and probably still is in, in, in a large part of, 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 of China and I, I didn't know if maybe it was some, you know, something to do with being married and having children or, or. To be know. honest, like the, the, the family is the, the cell of the society in Romania and the family is kind of uh, very uh, well uh, um, connected as a, as a lineage and everything. But we have uh, orphanages and I think it's because the government don't pay too much attention and uh, obviously in different countries they uh, raise money and uh, help where it needs so perhaps some uh, uh, charities in uh, england they raise money clothes uh, all sorts of to send uh, to romanian orphanages and that's going on a social media, on the media, and okay, that's what we do. So that's, uh, you know, associated with uh, that uh, subject. It's okay. E everyone needs help. Uh, there's nothing uh, wrong to help uh, people. Mm. Yeah, we have um, huge, huge issues in this country. It's just that they're, they're, they're very very cleverly dre dressed up to not look like problems but well if you if you want to uh, divert the attention from the local problem or our problem show a different problem show mm. other countries problem because people go and watch it that makes sense you i mean you put it very well on few of your uh, podcasts like about us media and what the media it's uh, it's washing so it's a good washing machine yes i'm glad you see it 
Yeah, well, well <laughs> you, you have to be half blind to don't see it. And some people decide to don't see it because it's not on their interest or they have a good life and it's not affecting their life now. But as soon as it's going to affect their families and life, they will, oh, okay, that's not good. So till you, till you don't get it, uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Let, let's not talk about the, you, yes. you, you know, let, let's just not because, but it's really caused quite an issue doing podcasts with people because like you say, we could say some people don't get it. I, I would say probably 99% of people don't get it. I'm fortunate to speak to more kind of enlightened people who, who understand what's going on. But it's so hard to have a chat with someone when they're coming out with stuff that is putting your child into slavery for, for the rest of their life. And, and when they're saying things like, oh, well, it's just so we can go on holiday or, oh, it's just that, you know, life will be back to... It's like, oh my God, do you only ever think about yourself? Do you, not think about exactly. the, do you not think about the children, what you're doing? Oh, but it's not mandatory. Yes, it is mandatory. Try and get on an aeroplane. You know, try if if you're um say a traveling salesman, you have to travel to different countries or this kind of thing, or an air steward or, or, or this, you're gonna have huge pressure on you to conform, to conform. Yeah. That's all I'm saying, folks. I'm not going to say any more. I've, I've... It, it, it's not mandatory, but there are some small roads that all go in the same place. So whatever way you travel, you'll be, you'll be channeled toward that gate. That's, that's, let's put it in this way. Yes, massively. And I'm, I'm glad you see it. And it's all leading to the same... Excuse me. It's all leading to the same place. And George, it's become, sorry, I know we're going slightly sideways, but this is so important. People understand every time you go, oh, yeah, but I only did it because of this. Or, then it's just. You're, you're either for this agenda and the enslavement of mankind or you're against it. There isn't like a, there isn't. Oh, I only did. No, it, it's. I, and. When I look my son in the eye, he he has to know I did my best for him. Everything that everything that I could. Um, so that's yes. So we were talking about flagging up problems and issues to hide other issues, weren't weren't we? Um, so what is the the gypsy connection? When I was young, we were fascinated by gypsies because mainly it was in uh, folklore, so stories that, that you heard when you were children and you heard about these gypsy caravans pulled by a horse and this, this um, almost like wild-like people that would eat rabbits and hedgehogs and catch fish from the rivers and this kind of fascinating stuff. And then, of course, as time has gone on, we get more travel, what they call travellers. So proper caravans, cars, um, quite a lot of money, some of them. Um, so, yes, what, why is this such a strong connection with Romania, <laughs> Ro Romany, Romania? So some uh, Romanian travelers are coming to UK and they don't behave. So that's why we are associated sometimes with the travelers. Mm. But uh, we have, I mean, travelers are all over the, the world. Um, I don't think uh, a specific group of, uh, a specific ethnic group should represent a country. That makes sense. But yeah. again, it's, a, it's a something good to point out to look somewhere else yeah i didn't mean it negatively i, I mean no no, no it, i know yeah i, I mean yeah. I'm, fa I'm fascinated about the culture of the gypsies like where did they come from who, who are they mm. what well we we have a, a theory in romania they come from kind of uh, india that uh, that 
part of the country. Yeah. That's what been told. And it's a story that uh, actually uh, Ceausescu, he tried to send all the Romanian gypsies uh, to India. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, that was a uh, kind of a true story. Yes, now you mention it, I'm I'm remembering the connection to it to to India. Um, it's fascinating when you look at history like this, and you see the peoples of the world and where they've all come from. What um... they they have their own language. So, for example, the gypsies, uh, mostly in Europe, they understand each other. They have their own language. I'm not sure here in uh, in UK, but definitely, for example, I spoke with uh, some of my students. Uh, so, for example, Bulgarian gypsies, they understand perfectly the Romanian gypsies. They have their own culture. They have their own uh, costumes. So they're like a, a, an ethnic group. Obviously, they are different than uh, other groups. That's why we call it a diversity. <laughs> yes. Um. Romanian men, I haven't, I've only met one woman that, that I know. Um, funny enough, I met her in the sauna at the, at the gym. She was the one that said to, I said to her, where are you from? And she said, guess. I said, give me a clue. She said, we're, we're one of the countries in the world that speaks uh, a Latin language. Um, but, uh, you guys seem quite like what well balanced, qu quite knowledgeable, quite calm. Is is this is this normal? Mm, it used to be normal because the um, I'll say the the education till a certain point it was very strong. Uh, I used to go to school uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, and we used to learn about, for example, geography. We used to learn about all the countries in, in, uh, in the world, uh, know the, the capital, the big cities, uh, big, uh, I mean, the industry, uh, population, quite a lot of uh, knowledge. And we used to learn about the history about almost every single country. So you see the, the difference on, on, on uh, education now is not the same education. So I'll say my generation and perhaps another, another two generations after me, we had a, a different education, more, say more broad. Um, we didn't used to have like credit cards and um, I'll say a chance to borrow money with interest. So used to kind of, if I have 10 pounds, for this month, I have to uh, kind of make sure it's all put to a good use and I don't need to borrow. So we'll be more responsible on certain things. And also I think the national service is important, especially for male, because you get discipline, you get uh, like an army, you wake up six o'clock or five o'clock uh, on a normal time and you go to bed 10 o'clock. That's it. After 10 o'clock, just head under the pillow and <laughs> no one talk. Um, and you have a routine. So that's making you to be more uh, disciplined, have a, um, a goal. Uh, you look to um, improve yourself. So I think this is part of important for, it's important part for a young male. Now we don't have a national service anymore in Romania. So... That's why it start to, to watering out. Because you mentioned also some people think in UK should be mandatory. If you look at the other countries, Israel, uh, I think Switzerland, everyone is going and doing their national service and go after three months for refresh and stuff like that. I think it's, it's good for everyone. This is my opinion. It's just an opinion. It's not a suggestion. So, yeah. Yes, and possibly have not a form of national service for people who maybe don't want to go and learn to kill, right? Maybe, I don't know, you work for the, the council or something. Um, well, you, you, you can go in the army, not necessarily. I mean, you learn to shoot. That doesn't mean you are going to kill somebody, but perhaps you'll use it to uh, save your life. Because in army, you, you can be like on a, all sorts of, you can be a driver. 
you can be have any other jobs not necessarily have to be on the front line and go and do all sorts of uh, activities that makes sense so but yeah. the first the first three months when you got discipline how to walk how to march how to uh, i don't know fall crawl, all sorts i think that's important because it's part of it's a physical uh, education it's it's a mental education a lot of people kind of uh, when I was to train them, oh, I'm not going there. Yes, you go because I'm going first. So if I crawl to that mood, so I lead by example, you crawl with me. Mm. So if you cannot carry your weapon, I'll do it. So, oh, the sergeant is helping me. I have to do it. So you motivate them. It's your job. So if you have a good instructor, you can motivate people. And we as a human, we can do so much things if we are strong here. So it doesn't matter how I see big you are mentally have to be strong. I think what would be good. And I get, I have this conversation a lot because a lot of people write to me and say, Chris, I, I nearly joined the Marines or I wish I was. And, and I say, dude, you, you live your life. Don't just be happy. The past is the past. Don't, you shouldn't live your whole life thinking, I wish I'd done this. It's just, it's unhealthy. But having said that, it would be good to have some sort of academy. I'm thinking young men, but it doesn't have to be limited to men, but where young guys could go and they could be tested and they could learn the skills and they could learn how to look after one another and all, all the sort of good qualities that I think what I would call warrior qualities, and by warrior, I don't mean fighting. Um, but of course, if you do that under national service, then you have to you have to work for for you know who, don't you? For the for the people that don't really care very much about you. Um, yeah, well, the national service is, is it used to be one year, but again, after the national service, you went back on a civilian life, and uh, but you have some discipline, you have some. Um, you gain some skills in mean, most of us, you know, I mean, not 100% uh, of uh, people. Well, I think that will be, will be good for society because, you know, when you, when you are a, a bunch of guys there, all the time you eat together, you go together, do things together, you learn how to live with other people who have a different opinion, different needs. So it make it a little bit more flexible, more to see the things from, from not just from your point of view, from different point of view, which we, we are so good for society. I mean, so you learn not to be selfish because if you see the, your friend struggle, you help him. Uh, I think that's, that will be kind of a good benefit to society. Yes. Yes. I want to... Um, ask you george i mean you spent a few years in in the army so when you did your national service did you just decide to stay in the army is is that how it worked well i had a one year uh, gap between uh when i finished and when i um uh, uh, i mean offer my services uh, uh, a soldier um I've done a different job between, I just wanted to kind of get a bit more experience on different um, uh, stuff. And then uh, I said, okay, this is uh, what I want to do. So I uh, went to the next unit, which was about maybe 15 minutes on a walking distance from where I used to live. Um, and I've done uh, my test. So I pass it. So I become to be like, a, we call it a pay uh, soldier. Did you see any action as a soldier? We've done a lot of uh, exercises. Um, I mean, NATO is still using some of the, I'll say, the big um, um, fields there in Romania. Never been on a real life. I tried to go when the Kosovo start, but... Um, my uh, boss didn't let me to go. So I was a little bit uh, kind of uh, upset about that. So that kind of went with me for good years, uh, which led um, to me leaving the army because then I, 
I've never uh, been allowed to go on any kind of uh, this stuff. Perhaps it's a good thing because we are talking now. <laughs> we don't know what's happened there. Um, the reason they said you cannot go because we need to hear to instruct people wasn't uh, my uh, my call on that decision. Mm. But I'm still I'm in a very good relationship with every one of my um, ex uh, uh, commanders, uh, which is talk. Uh, we'll, we'll talk uh, from time to time when I'm going home. Uh, I'm going to see them. So still there. Good. And George, you, you've done several years in close protection. Yes, I've done it when I was in army. So, you know, when generals come across, they need to look after them, especially when they go and drink and uh, eat. So you have to look after them. <laughs> um, I've done a, a lot of uh, in Portugal. Um, I've done few jobs in UK, but when I mean, close protection, most of the like UK close protection is more like an unarmed security officer. So you still have to relay on your hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, and obviously you have to look after somebody, uh, which is not, it's okay. I'll not do it again. It's, uh, it's not healthy, let's put it in this way. It's a lot of stress and some uh, clients treat you like uh, they own you. And I don't like that. Yes, I was chatting to a bodyguard, Den Champ, on our live show on Friday, I think it was. And he said it's, I think he was being generous. He said it's one hour action in the day and then it's seven hours shopping or babysitting or. Um, yeah. So, uh, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a little sorry. bit. Um, when you end up spending your life doing that kind of shift work and it's quite, you're just doing it to earn the money. It, I think you have to make a dis decision then. We, we had um, a client somewhere here in, in UK. I'm not saying place and everything. Uh, very, very wealthy. Uh, he had some problem. He called, okay, can you arrange this? Yes. So I went down there to see what's all about. Uh, I assessed the situation, cameras, uh, because it was about where he'd been working. Um, went to see the home, see if we can create a panic room, what can be done, everything, all that, you know, like by the book. So he said, I'm not taking the job because, but I can suggest somebody. So we put a guy there, very knowledgeable. Everything was okay. For about two, three days, I got a phone call from my guy, George. Well, something is going on here. What's going on? Well, he don't want to listen to me. He just said, "Well, I'm paying you. You stay here. Do what what I'm telling you." So I got the phone. What are you doing, man? He's supposed to look after you. Yeah, but I'm paying him. Well, you paying him to look after you. Whatever way you go, he's going. You have to listen to the, him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Didn't last on us. So we pull out, say, no, nah, our name is not there. You do whatever you want. No problem. Hmm. Did you have any dangerous moments? Well, I used to work a lot on the doors, uh, especially in Portugal. And um, if you see the dangerous moments before happen, you can avoid them. Hmm. I used to do doors on my own. Uh, like a ground floor and level one of uh, that uh, club. Always stay on the middle of the stairs, so see up and down. What a good money. But when I saw somebody trying to be cocky, trying to annoying people, just take him out. Don't let it to escalate. You have to stay on the ball. Um, a funny one. I mean, I used to like to fight. For reasons, for no reasons, as, as a young male, uh, not anymore because it's dangerous. So, I had a very kind of interesting story where the awareness pay every single penny. <laughs> uh, I've been on a uh, Halfords buying some uh, uh, windscreen wipers. Mm. I didn't find the right ones. I called uh, the guy who worked there. 
In the meantime, a group of five guys very loudly came in. They split in two. Uh, and while I've been, been looking for the, the stove that I needed, two guys passed behind me. So I used to have like a, a small bug across of my body. So when he passed, is it instinct? I just bring it to the front, that touch attention. So the guy passed, stop on in the end of the, the ale and look at me. I didn't look at him, but I saw him. So at that point, I, I was very, very aware. Um, they left. So they all joined together, got out and start to work very slow, but I still, I was still watching them. So I went to the till and I was thinking, okay, I can do this home. I mean, to change the wipers or I can pay three pounds. I think it was three pounds fifty or something. The guy can sh uh, change the wipers. So, okay, I'll pay for it. As soon as we get out of the half uh, they start to kind of turn around. And I saw it. So I took my uh, car key. So one of them now start to come back towards my car. The guy even didn't notice. He'd been uh, busy with uh, the wipers. So I uh, unlocked the, the car, open the door, get my bag, throw it on the car, close the door, lock the door, put the keys on the pocket. Now I was watching him. And I took a pen and I look at the pen, I look at him, put it on my pocket. And I was looking at them. You know what happened? That was a message. I'm aware. I'm here. That's it. They all join together, jump in a car, off you go. So, again, self-defense about be aware. That's very simple like that. Yes. Uh, dangerous problem, uh, dangerous situations. I mean, if you don't know you are interviewed by a very dangerous person you'll treat that person as an equal because if you know that guy it's a criminal and kill somebody you'll be like mm, i know this guy this guy is dangerous so you perhaps will a lot of people will be very very intimidated so i used to live on a on a neighborhood uh, with a lot of uh, gypsies and some of them uh, like a clan's families very well known for violence uh, being in the jail beating police officers up all sorts of um and there was a family 13 brothers all boys all in a prison so i knew most of them uh with some of them i, I used to talk but one of the brothers came out and i didn't know so i was going to my uh training so about a block of apartments, so one of the gypsies came out and asked me for a, a cig. I said, I'm not smoking. Give me a cig, I said. Well, I said, I don't smoke. So the guy was, well, do you know who I am? I said, no. Do you know who I am? No. I said, do you want to know? And the guy started to laugh, saying, listen to this one. So now more friends coming out from the, I said, oh, oh, something is going on there. So I have to hit first because that's my only chance, and then run like a Hussein Bolt. So the guys came very aggressive, and this guy said, no, 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 I'm talking with him. So I said, okay, he have some uh, dignity there, and we'll do it one-to-one, -one, like old, old, uh, old times. And he said, you really don't know who I am. I said, no. So he said, I'm Balint. He said, I'm George. The, the name rings straight away. So the guy said, I like you. I like you have a, and uh, from now on, if anyone has problem with you, tell them that you are my friend. I say, well, so have you as a friend and I have your brother as a friend. Ah, so you're my brother, yes. And I have that one as a friend. So I'm one of the luckiest guy. Yes, you are. So we shake hands, that's it. So I think when you don't know what you go in, but you go with attitude, you can sort some, uh, some issues out there. That was very, very, very dangerous because um, could end up on very, very ugly. Um, the most dangerous one, it was when I stand up for my uh, brother. So again, with the gypsies, one of the guys been eating his uh, uh, pack lunch. 
all, all the time my brother coming home and just crying and this guy pushing me and bullying me and okay no worries so i was uh, kind of watching him so when he came home just went out of my house and beat him up very very bad so i punched him on the face clenched fist i cut him on the, on the front teeth at the start here uh the the i've been pierced by one of his teeth and I was celebrating for maybe four minutes. Chris, it, uh, you know, when, when you hear like a um, riot, a lot of voices and more and more and more intense. So he came with the family, with cousins, with, I don't know who the heck it was, I think around 30 people mm -hmm. to our uh, door. We used to have an apartment at the ground floor. And I was so scared, I was about 13 at that point. I was scared, honest to God. My mom was in the kitchen cooking. So the guy's been banging on the door and all that sort. So my mom opened the door. She was with a, um, uh, a kitchen knife on hand. And oh, we'll, we'll go and kill me. If you want to kill him, you kill me first, but I'll kill one of, of, uh, of you guys. So I kind of like stand off there. Now, opposite our apartment, I live the... Um, one of the famous Jiffy's family uh, in the neighborhood. So the guy came out and started to speak on their language and they all left. So we've been kind of very good relationship with them. So that was kind of one of the scariest things because they've been trying out to force him to get in an apartment. It was scary. Wow. <laughs> but again, my mom saved my ass at that point. So put it in that way. Yes. There's a certain limit where you things just become quite frightening. It, and you know, I I relate this with um, with ladies who say, "Ah, uh, I can't hurt anybody. I cannot kill thing. Everyone can kill. We are animals. You just need the right reason." and you'll do it, especially as a parent. That's a very strong reason when your offspring is uh, it's there in danger. And uh, my mind proved it because she was a very peaceful lady, never want to hurt somebody or speak bad about somebody. And that's in the back of my head. When I'm reading books and go to conferences, people say, no, I can't do this. Yes, you can. With a little bit of training, yes, you can. Yes. George, uh, I want to just go back and ask you about Ceausescu. Was he was executed, wasn't he? Yep, and a lot of uh, I said people being very happy about that, but that was uh, for me was uh, not the right thing to do. They killed him because they knew it. If they not get rid of him, everything what they've been plotted will be reversed. That's my true opinion. Oh, you think by getting rid of him, it would make the situation worse? So let's put it this way. In, 90, in 1989, Romania had zero death. Pay everything. Nothing to, to pay. And they had a lot of... Uh, I mean, Romania still have uh, a lot of money to collect from Iran, Iraq, that countries. Um, I think it was a plot, most of the people know, and people who been after him in charge sold our country. So it's another country who is owned by other people. That's my opinion. It has nothing to do with the politics. I can express my opinion. So he's done a lot of good for people. Um, for example, you got married, you got a chance to get a, a house. No one was being uh, allowed to stay on the streets without the work didn't have a, uh, a job, they will find you one. Yeah, we couldn't travel uh, abroad. It's not a big deal. We couldn't have certain things. It's not a big deal. Uh, other countries been, uh, you know, starving whenever. So, uh, and as I mentioned, he looked after the people. But that's my point of view. So other people think he was a dictator. It, um... Did when under his rule did you have the central bank system? 
Yeah, it was the the Bank of Romania? Yeah. But was that tied into the Rothschilds and the? Not at that point. No. No. Not at that point. And you could get money from the bank with zero interest uh, to get uh, your house if you wanted. Yes. Or even, or for example, some people got a house and they used to pay uh, like a monthly to their house without getting anything from the bank. You just get the keys and a contract, that's it. That was a very good system. Well, it's we see great, what, uh, what's happened. Yeah. It's a great system, George, and it's the way it should be. And um, it's if you don't understand the money system, folks, it's very important to understand the money system. Um, when you understand the money system, then you understand what's going on in uh, in the wider world. But it's um, lending money at interest is 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 referred to in biblical terms so in the scriptures as usury and it's it was forbidden throughout most uh, well many 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 lands if not if not all at one point because people could see if you started to let people control the money system and charge interest then they they have carte blanche to just enslave everybody and that's um you know, we, we, we're starting to, this is what we're seeing now. This is the, the, the bigger picture of what is, go, what is going on. And again, it ties in with people going, oh, I've got to travel because I'm a, I do this. It, it's yes. Cause this system of, this system of control is, uh, it's so strong. Well, you have a money, you have power. That's all about yes. money. Money buys almost everything these days. Let's get on to the martial arts then, George, because I'm sure a lot of people are watching this dying dying to hear. Did did you do Krav Maga in the military? No, actually, I started Krav Maga in 2002. Uh, in the military, we, we I used to train them uh, based on um, karate and uh, jiu-jitsu principle, uh, principles. Uh, and for the military, it was more about how to use your rifle and your... Uh, um I don't know how you call it on um, in English the, the small uh, to dig your own um, uh, uh, is it the either a bayonet that's the the knife no no not the band no no en it's a uh, entrenching tool to dig the trench yes to dig the trench so we have the the, the foldable one so how to use it because so at that point, you have like a serrate, uh, uh, one of the sides for that uh, trenchy tool and very, very sharp. So you can use it as a, as a, um, I mean, fighting tool. Um, so that's what we've been uh, teaching based on that, hand-to-hand -hand combat, how to defend against the knife, but nothing at the scale of Krav Maga. So it was based on, you attack me this way and I'll block this way. Uh, fight is dynamic. You don't expect. So the most of the, I want to say, problem for the martial arts world, um, you have a solution for everything that is going on. So if you have 1,000 problems, you have 1,000 solutions. So if it's 1,001 problem arrive, you need to find a solution, which Kramaga, what they've done, they simplified. You have something for more uh, situations. Uh, these days, Krama Guy, it's a little bit um, competitive with other styles. So if A Krama Guy have a spinning kick and B Krama Guy have to do the same because they want to be kind of level up, that makes sense. If Brazilian Jiu Jitsu come with something new, Krama Guy will come and implement it. Even if it's against the principles, they still have it there because they want to be the best. Uh, and now if we go back on, uh, I would say simplicity and what we can do under the real uh, life stress, not too many things because fine motor skills are going when it's 110 beats per minute, mixed motor skills 145, 
gross motor skills like running, throwing stones, that is more deployable under the stress. Now, when you do all sorts of uh, complicated moves, it will not work. So in 2002, I came across with Kramaga in Portugal. I used to work at that gym and teaching uh, uh, full contact and other kind of uh, combat skills there. And the police, um, uh, maritime police, it was a guy who, I mean, like, you have like a terrestrial police, like on the land and on the sea. So that guy was uh, like a, a sea police officer. He came in, asked me, do you want to try this? I said, yeah, why not? So after my class, I went to try his uh, stuff, fall in love with it. I said, oh, why? I didn't know that for a long, long time ago. I started to train, and in 2007, I went to do my instructor course, and since 2007, I'm teaching Kramaga. Uh, I've been to Israel, I've been to all, uh, I mean, I've been, so my instructor course, first part was in Poland, second part, it was in um, uh, Sweden, uh, no, first part, Sweden second part Poland, third part Sweden. I've done with uh, what uh, my instructor course with what uh, actually the Kramaga industry called one of the best with um, Eyal Yanilov and with his team. Then when I finished, I've been with uh, IKMF and then IKMF split in two. So we are KMG standing for Kamaga Global and I came for International Kamaga Federation. And then uh, I left them because too much uh, not nice things happened between stuff there. I left, I joined to Kamaga Core. There was no difference there. I left them. And then in 2015, I met up uh, Itai Gil. Uh, he's a legend. Uh, you should have him on a podcast. I can put you in contact with him. Uh, he's, he, he's a fourth Dan Black Belt. Is is that correct? No, he's a grandmaster in Kramaga. He's a ex Yamam Special Forces captain. On uh, I mean, he left as a captain. He's still activate now. I mean, he's a consulting Yamam and Special Forces in which, uh, Israel. Which country? Israel. He's an Israeli, yes. What was his name? I'm just going to have a quick look because I'm... Itai. Itai Gil. Itai Gil. Perhaps, if you, if you watch the Hell Week on BBC... Ah. Darling the Bell. Ah, I see. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to... Yes. I see your picture with him. Yeah, so in 2015, I took uh, all uh, our instructors there for uh, bespoke training, six days. We've been doing a CQB, we've been doing a force in force drills with uh, scene munition or FX munition, I want to call it. Uh, hardcore. Uh, he used to say, guys, we train here, no Vaseline, we just go for it. So it was a very good training. Uh, and since then, uh, I've been working very closely with him, and even now we're still uh, working with him. Uh, I'm going, actually, if everything is okay, I'm going to see him and train with him uh, end of uh, August. And this year, in November, he will uh, run a seminar for my academy um, here in the uh, UK. He's a very humble guy. He will tell you straight away, I don't know if it's working or not. You try it. My work might not. It depends on each individual. So keep it simple. No fancy things because that will take you out of the problem. So that's kind of my journey in Kramaga. And as I mentioned, I'm sticking with, um, with simplicity and straightforward because when they invented Kramaga, the Kramaga support, they, they made it available for civilians to be able to defend themselves. I'm talking about in 1940-something uh, when Emi invented, in, uh, invented this or put all these tiles together to create one. Um, it's been designed for civilians to 
be able to defend themselves. They've been bullied in uh, the streets of uh, Czech Republic. So since then, more things come in and make it a little bit more complex, more uh, broad, let's put it in this way. And it's a lot of my camera is better than yours and yours is worse than mine. It's, it, it's irrelevant. You can be a very, I'll say, good fighter. You might die much faster than me. It depends on from where you get hit, who hit you. Uh, are you aware about that? Uh, depends who you face. Uh, it's no one is better than anyone. It's sometimes also the luck play uh, a big part on on our lives. You need to be on the right place, the right time, and have some luck. Yes, this is the way, isn't it? C commit. I think commitment is the the big word, is it not? You have to. I mean, you have to commit with uh, to everything. Uh, whatever what you do, if you don't commit, you don't get a a, a good result. That makes sense. Um, I would say when somebody take on anything. I mean, I have some um, some weird questions. Somebody asked me, "Oh, is this better than Kramaga?" I said, "I can't tell you if this is better than Kramaga. If you come and tell me, and you truly believe Zumba is the best self defense in the world, who am I to tell you it's not? Because you believe on that. And I mean, I don't want to waste my time to tell you Zumba is a dance and it's for fun and it's for your mental health and well being." I don't want to waste my time. If you believe Zumba is the best one, that will be the best one. So I'm not on to arguing this is better than this, it's better than that. It's what you believe and what you are after. That's very simple like that. Um, I'm telling my students, you come to this class, we all here humble, we all want to learn to become a better, uh, better person. We don't have nothing to prove we have lots to improve. That's a few things what I'm telling them. I will learn. I learn every day. I learn from my students. I learn from every person that I can learn because it's important. And uh, we're still learning. And uh, my father used to tell me, doesn't matter how much you learn, we still die stupid because you didn't learn everything what you could learn. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I've just written it down. Nothing to prove, lots to improve. That is a great... Yeah. Me metal, yeah. uh, great um, ma mantra for life. It has to be that way. Mm. Yes. Um, do you know Itan? Itan Cohen? No, he's no. he was this um, Israeli um, special forces guy that I met in Israel, and he was he took me and some guys sh shooting for the day. But uh, oh, I, I guess I, I guess you had a lot of fun shooting uh, Israeli style. Yes, it was quite tamed down a bit because it's a, a place called Caliber Three that 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 um, anybody can go there. Oh, you've been recently. Uh, this was a, about twelve months ago. Yes, because now you cannot shoot nine millimeters. It's uh, it's a small caliber. Oh, they they changed the load. Yeah, I know. Awful. I know. Awful. Especially it is what it is. You know, you know, it's not because they've been um, under the, the wall lies that um, terrorists go there and learn how to shoot and they use it to kill people and stuff like that. Well, you can go into, to learn how to shoot in Poland. You can, you can shoot AK and all, all sorts of. Mm. And I mean, you can, you can go to Czech Republic and shoot whatever what you want, just money you need. Yeah. Uh, but well, it is what it is. So this is right now. We don't need any any of those. Now you all go in and shoot a, what do you call it, a two two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess um, for friends listening, it, it's they've come down from the regular millimeter, so five point five six or nine mil to what's called a two two conversion. It's a kit you can put inside the breech of your rifle, and it converts it down to two two. And if you get hit by a 2-2, it's not going to be nice, but it's very unlikely it's, it's going to kill you. And I suppose the thing in with this shooting uh, range in, in Israel is technically someone could breach it 
and then just turn around and, and shoot all the instructors, I, I, I'm guessing. Um, but let's get back to Krav Maga. Why, why did it become so popular? I'm guessing it's worldwide, but obviously in, in the UK. Well, worldwide is very, very popular. Uh, you'll be surprised that not... Uh, I mean, in Israel, it's more popular uh, MMA and like a uh, competition uh, combat sports than Krav Maga. They do it in the military, um, but a lot of civilians uh, train more this type of uh, combat sports. Now, it's popular because it's straightforward, it's brutal, you don't take uh, any prisoners there, and it's doing the job. But again, it depends on who is teaching and what is teaching. Uh, for uh, a good Krav Maga should have a good uh, set of uh, principles and you have to develop everything around the principles instead of uh, uh, around the, uh, I'll say, problems. So you should have one technique for seven, eight problems, not three solutions for seven problems. That makes sense. So the, the simple will be more chances for you to do something about your heart because you have to think only in one thing. You have to do this. That makes sense. So I'll take, for example, um, a knife attack. Uh, we split it in uh, two, 180 degrees above and 180 degrees below. So you have two techniques. Now the angle doesn't really matter. The difference between stab is blade is close to you, slash blade is far away from you. It's a still circular, very narrow angle. Uh, should I be bothered too much about? It's a knife coming towards you. You might see, I mean, you might see it, you might not. Uh, so we don't call it survive. I mean, we don't call it defending a knife. You don't defend a knife. You survive a knife attack. I will be lucky if we can see the, the weapon on a play. Because if you don't see it, you don't feel the pain. You're just kind of after, if you get two, three stabs and the guy is running and you don't check yourself and you bleed, then you feel yourself tired. And let's put it in this way, in UK, if you call the ambulance and told, tell them that you've been stabbed, they will not turn up. The police come first to see if the place is safe and the ambulance is coming after. And the response of ambulance, UK, maybe six minutes. You know that if you get a some stabs, you you drive very fast. So self-defense have to go hand in hand with first aid, trauma, like a military style, put a tourniquet, pack the wound. You should know your stuff if you want to survive. Very simple like that. Now, again, it's, it's popular because uh, can be implemented to military units, to police units, SWAT and everything. I mean, when that is relevant to a military or law enforcement, as soon as somebody is jumping and grabbing your weapon, weapon retention, use the weapon as a, uh, I mean, as a cold weapon, that makes sense. Um, you don't manage to deploy your, uh, your uh, handgun. The guy is with a knife on two meters, what you do, you still have to, to deploy your hand-to-hand -hand skills to create some space and time to deploy and move. Again, principles like when the civilians move out of the line, uh, create distance. Uh, if you didn't manage to shoot from the hip, I'm saying, then use it, move. It perhaps uh, depends on uh, what holster you have, the uh, rules of engagement. Some people, uh, some countries are allowed to have one bullet on a chamber. Some countries don't. Uh, and when your life is in danger, you will be like, all over the place so same would like i guess you've done some force in force uh, drills when when uh, you get hit while you get into the rooms is not is not very happy <laughs> it's not very very good it's changing the way how you enter the room the way how you slice it and apply more careful uh, tactics than just go there because somebody is uh, shooting some blanks it's a different story mm. so can we go through I'm, I'm interested to explore 
the um can I call it like the minimal amount of systems to deal with the maximum am amount of threat? Yeah, no problem. So, what about if we I have? A Go on. Yeah, I was just going to say. So, uh, it, like, we're in a pub. I've had too much to drink. I think you've upset me, and I, I just throw the the typical the typical punch. What? What? Is there is there one technique to deal with that, or is there is there more more than it, one? It's very simple. The way how you show it to me, you want to punch me on the face like a straight punch, correct? Now, well, if you have no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> if you have a beef with me, I'll put my hands up. Now, would you punch me on the face? Not now, no. Not now, exactly. So I know you'll not punch me on the face because here it's a shield. Mm. So you have to go circular, which take a little bit more time and it's more visible. So do I pose the intention to fight you? Do I pose, uh, 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 do I look aggressive to you? No, no, no submissive. No. Okay, so now the law is on my side. If I'm going, if you would start to raise a voice and I'm going, okay, what you do now? It's a call to fight. I don't stand uh, too much, uh, I don't have too much chances in the front of law. I've been provoking. I'm not provoking, and I'm telling you straight away, if you want to punch me, you have to come with a haymaker, which is now, it's your choice. So if you come with a haymaker, I'm just bursting in. Uh, we talk about like, you acquire the target, you shoot the bullet travel and make everything for you. Now, that's your bullet. You acquire the target, you are going to hit the target. By the time when you, when you already set this up, target is moving. I mean, you'll miss it. Me moving forward, I may get a bit whacked here, but my hands is act as a shield. So having two similar motions, same biomechanics is giving more chance to focus 100% on both of them, which is the same motion. Instead of, for example, blocking and punching, I have two tasks to focus on. Now, one will get more attention than the other one. You cannot do two different things with the same, uh, with the same focus, the same, uh, I'll say, uh, efficiency. That makes sense. We, we cannot, uh, let's say, you can do more than one thing, but one will get more uh, priority. So if you are going to defend yourself, what will be the priority there? Making a good block, perhaps, yes? So that strike will not be as good as, a, as, as the block. Now, moving from here forward straight away, both hands, the same attack, two attacks. Hold on. One will land here, jawline, and one will scope the attack. So you don't defend, you strike against a strike. It's very simple. Doesn't matter if it's a knife, if it's a, a haymaker, you are the same. Because I don't know at that point, your hand will be low, I couldn't see it while you've been. Uh, Chatting, I couldn't move away because too many people around me. We're talking about uh, in a pub, yes. So we could talk about close quarters. So I have to put my hands up because with the hands down, if you want to head with me from very, very close range, or if you want to punch me, till my hands come up, I'll get it because I'll be reactive. Action beat reaction, straightforward by the physical law, straight away. Okay, what about if we're we stood facing off and I, I try to kick you in the nuts. It's how you present yourself. So if I shift my body to the side, there is no gap for you to kick. Only I, I need to turn a little bit, one hip in, and there's no gap there. It's, it's your, I would say, body posture, the way how you present yourself. Now, if I have a chance to keep distance will be at least two steps between me and you. If it's confined area, I will all the time turn to the side, hands on the front, but never static. I'll never, never, never speak with somebody while you, while you still never, because we don't have a rear camera. We don't see what's happened here. I want to be in emotion. Uh, if we go on a shooting range and somebody, you have a, a target in emotion, it's hard to, to hit the target. 
I'm his target. I have to move. If I move left, right, 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 left, right, left, it's hard for him to, to follow. That makes sense. So by the time when he's deciding I'm going to strike and I move, oops, I, it's rewriting his, uh, his command straight away. I have to do something else. So even if I don't punch or kick, if I move constantly, what I'm doing, I'm becoming proactive. So I'm defending, becoming proactive. That's very simple. And what what position are you, George? What 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 rank or belt do you do you hold? So I'm master level one. Uh, I've done. I mean, I achieved this with Itagil. Uh, it's endorsed also by the Ministry of Education of Maine State in USA. Uh, I'm the chief instructor of uh, Sparta's Academy. And also, I represent uh, Israeli Security uh, Solutions in UK, which is a uh, no, it's okay. Which is a uh, Itagil uh, company. Okay, so what what was the uh, Israeli connection? Sorry. So I'm the representative of uh, Israeli Security Solution in oh. UK. Yeah. Okay. So, it's yeah. That's a, a security company. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, Itagil company. He's uh, dealing with um, all sorts of uh, security with Kramaga, all sorts. So, so now, now that we've had this chat, this this training session, I can tell people for the rest of my life, I've I've been trained by a Krav Maga master. No, <laughs> no. I'll tell you why. If you could, if you have time or you have opportunity to come. Uh, actually, I will do something else. I will launch an invite. So on 6th of November, uh, I want to see your face to our seminar run by Itagil. How does that sound? That's, that's a very kind offer. Yes. Why not? So then you, you, you can say, I've been trained by two masters. I mean, a master and a grandmaster. It's even better. There we go. Yeah. I, would, I would teach you the double punch. Do you know the, the Royal Marines double punch? Uh, no. There you go. Wow. That that's could, good. That could, that's, that could, coming, that's coming from, from karate. They used to, I used to do that a long time ago, punching from the, the, a little bit above the belt. Yes. So I've, done, I've done Shotokan, I've done Wadryu, I've done Taekwondo, Kyokushin. I've done kind of a lot of... The double punch, you can take out six Taliban. Yes. If you put three, three in one, one line and three in another line. That makes sense? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, George, it's been a wonderful chat. Thank you so much. So I thank you for inviting me, Chris. Oh, no, no, no. Absolutely my pleasure. But I want you to promote everything that you can now before we say goodbye. So... Which part of the country is your academy? And if, if, if people want, is, is it online or is it a, a, a dojo? Or so, uh, Sparta's Academy of Kramaga, we have uh, classes in Sheffield, Leeds, Harrogate, Hull, Durham, York, Newcastle. Okay. Uh, we also teach kids. We also work with uh, corporates. We also work with uh, charities. We help them as much as we can. We have online platform. Uh, we have uh, one school in Romania. We work very closely with uh, a few schools in uh, Greece. So that's kind of what uh, we do. We also um, have, uh, let's say, an umbrella organization, which is called Kramaga United Kingdom, where people can join and um, they can come and ask for help. We'll help them. We'll uh, guide them if they need. So we are trying to help everyone. I think that's uh, at least what we can do. I think you're doing a great job, mate. It, oh, thank you very much. Uh, you, you know, you've got a good energy and it, it it's a, it looks very professional and um and uh, we're always very excited to to help uh, our students and you know what's my okay, satisfaction from this class when a story from a student uh, came back to us saying oh you know uh 
this helped me so much and so much, uh, or I've done exactly what you say and worked, or have so many people coming back to me and uh, saying that, thank you, you saved my life. And one of the guys, it's a, a Polish guy, uh, um, he worked on a security industry. Coach, you saved my life. No, I wasn't the airman. You saved your own life. No, no, but I've done everything what you say. Exactly. I give you the knowledge. And I mean, you have the, the fire. Only what has to be done, just lighting the fire. That's, that's all. It's all on you. So you've been listening. You've been training hard. You apply the knowledge. So I'm proud of you. You saved your own life. I wasn't there. Now, even if I'll be there, I might not be able to save your life because it still depends on you. I might have the same problem. I might be doing something different. But that's the beauty of um, our teaching. We don't force people to do exactly what I'm doing because we are different. Well, but we tell you, like, this is and this and this. Now, see what suits you based on your capabilities, based on your disabilities, because that's part of your awareness. You should be aware of what you can do, what you cannot. Don't try something stupid because it will not work. That makes sense. Um, work it out and make it better. So that's how, how we, this is what we tell our students and how we encourage them to, to train. And this is why you're a master. Well, it's just a name. The knowledge is here. A piece of paper or a belt will not fight for me. They will not go to teach in, uh, in my behalf. Uh, it's just a title. I'm happy with it. It's a recognition, but I'm more happy that I can learn from everyone and improve day by day because life and society change. What applied two years ago might not apply today. And the society is going more violent. So everyone needs to know how to look after themselves. Anything that they believe on and can be useful, do something. Very true. George, what we will do is put all your links below, the, below this conversation. So if anybody wants to... to um, come and get involved and i strongly suggest you do this just sounds like a great opportunity if you're in in the in in these locations so um george we'll put the links below if you can just stay on stay on the zoom chat so i can thank you properly when i hit the record button off yeah but uh massive thank you again thank you very much for having me yes just and it was it was a very very good chat we can chat a bit after Yes, definitely. But that'll be not recorded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, George. And to our friends at home, massive love to you all. Please look after yourselves. If you could hit the like and subscribe button, that's going to help us. And we will see you next time.